Torrential rains have battered western and northern parts of Rwanda, flooding roads and villages and triggering landslides. More than 120 people have died, and search and rescue teams say that the death toll will rise as record water levels subside. Despite respite from the downpours, will be welcome, but only brief, as yet more rain is forecast. Villagers in Rwanda's wetlands are used to rain, but this, this is different. Storms have pounded the area since last week, destroying homes, roads and lives. For residents of Rubavu, a lull in the downfall offers a chance to retrieve possessions and reflect on a lucky escape. My wife was standing near the window when the flood water came through. She fell down, and as I tried to carry my child out of the house, I too was pushed down. But luckily I got out, and I'm safe, although some trees underneath did injure my legs. Authorities are bracing for the death toll here to rise as the flood waters recede. For those who survived, there is now a sense of disbelief and desolation. As you can see, I'm left with nothing, no bed and no household. I came here for a job. I'm safe, but all my belongings are gone. I have no money to rent a house, no husband, no children. I don't know where to go. This disaster is dangerous for us. Rescue and recovery efforts are ongoing across the worst hit areas, as the president promises to open homeless shelters to deal with an unfolding humanitarian emergency. Aid efforts, though, are likely to be hampered by forecasts for yet more rain. And we are joined now by Simona Schlindwein in the Ugandan capital, Kampala. How is the situation in the affected regions of Uganda and Rwanda? Well, today the sun came out in the morning and it's clearing up, giving us literally a bit of big, bit of picture of what happened in the last few days during the heavy downpour in western Uganda and northwestern Rwanda. And the whole region looks like a tornado went through. Literally whole villages were washed away. A river got over the banks and literally washed the whole agricultural sites away. Uh, it is a quite is a dire, dire uh, disastrous situation in these regions. Torrential rains, though, not a new phenomenon in this area, but why is it different this time? Well, the rainy season in this region is usually up from between January and April. So the rains in the last few months were actually very little. It was raining almost not that much. But then suddenly from one day to the other, the whole hell opened and the heavy, heavy downpour came, especially in the night when people are sleeping in their homes and are not aware of what's actually um, happening outside in outside their houses. So that is why a lot of people were literally washed away in their beds in their houses in the middle of the night in the sleep and could not find any rescue. That is the drama um, that that unfolds as well in the communities that uh, people could not look outside and see what's actually happening. And that's why so many people get really like died in their own beds in their own houses. It's more than 130 right now already. But uh, numbers are rising as more the emergency teams go into the uh, devastated areas. What is most needed right now to help those who have survived? The problem is emergency shelters in both countries. The emergency teams are existing, but they have limited funding. And most people li literally lost everything from the house to the beds to the to the food, and including the harvest. I mean, a lot of uh, agricultural sites are as well destroyed, meaning there is a very sustainable, desired uh, situation for lots of farmers who actually as well lost their crops for the next few months. Simona Schlinwein joining us from Kampala. Thank you. Thank you very much.